Okay. <clears throat> so we just finished um, topic six on functions, so I'm going to do a little bit of review on it. Um, it's, it's a particularly hard one to sort of test how much you understand it at this point. So like if you look at the Cody coursework, um, it's not possible for me to set up a Cody coursework where you're calling and writing like more than one function um, and then writing a script that calls them. So uh, the Cody coursework just has you write a single function. But then, as you could see from the lab, the lab had you do, you know, calling multiple functions and trying to understand how they talk to each other and how they're structured within a single file. So keep that in mind. Um, but in general, the thing that we introduced is just this idea of a function, and there's a couple really important things that um, make them different. Uh, first is just the way that you write the file. It has to have this function declaration line, which is um, this right here, which is auto-filled if you click a new function. And remember that for this, um, the function name here should match the file name. And um, it doesn't have to. And so if it, if it doesn't match, the file name will be the way to call the function, not the function name. The inputs are in parentheses behind the file name or behind the function name, and there can be no there can be no inputs. There can be one input, or there can be many inputs in, um, listed here, and each input, remember, can be either an array, or a string, or a scalar value. So one particular input could have multiple values contained within it as well. And that's the same with the outputs, but the outputs are in the front, equal sign, and a square bracket. It's just all the syntax for that. One of the things many of you note, started to notice when you're using functions is that they behave as a black box, meaning that the MATLAB workspace is not aware of anything that goes on inside the function. All it knows is what it, was sent, what it sent into the function or what came out of the function. And that's the same for if you call this function from another file or whatever. Um, wherever you call the function, none of the intermediate variables that are in that file are known to the, to the file or to the workspace. And so um, that will continue to come up in every lab because every lab here on out, it is recommended that you write a function and sometimes it's required because you're writing subfunctions. Okay. Yeah, so if there's multiple functions in one file, the convention is to use the top function as the file name. When you run a file, only the top function is run. The rest of the functions are only run if they're called within the top function. Okay. Yeah. So you, you basically, if you're doing it that way with multiple functions in the file, you just write it so that each of the functions are just used together. Yes, otherwise there'd be no reason to put it in that file, right? Because it can't be used anywhere else. So um, the general like convention is just like lab six. The top function is called the main function or like a, the general function and um, everything else is called underneath. Um, it used to be that you, the top function had to be contained in a function. So it had to be function lab six end even if there were no inputs and outputs to that function. But um, from what I can tell from a lot of people's computers um, when they were working on these and doing them incorrectly is that MATLAB is now allowing everything above to just be con not contained within a function. On, I think it's allowed on Macs. I can't really tell. Um, those are the things that MATLAB keeps changing. But what's what I do is I just write function lab 6 end and contain everything within a function so you're not confused on where things belong. The, the like debugging tip that I, ha I have for you this time is um, they're both accessing elements outside of 
the bounds of the array, but the error messages are very different. So for example, um, and by the way, this might seem like got, we got it. We know like <laughs> you can't access things outside an array. But once you start doing loops and you're accessing things from loops, which is what we're going to be doing, these errors are trickier to find because you don't really even know which element you're trying to access because it's some element that's being called within a loop. So that's where most people run into these errors is in future codes. Um, but uh, the idea is that if you access and if you're trying to access an element be below one because the first element is numbered one so if you're trying to access a zero element or a negative element you get this error that the subtract indice has to be um, positive uh, or logical uh, so you can access a zero logical element right but you can't access a zero element um, Just interesting now that they've changed that. I wonder how it knows which one that is. But uh, this comes up a lot because we start um, uh, we start accessing elements using i plus one or i minus one within the index call, and pretty much always someone forgets to adjust the loop, and they try to access the zero subscript, and so that you'll see that error a lot. And then same on the other side. This um, element is only ten, um, or this array only has ten elements. Um, but when you go out the other side, it says index exceeds matrix dimensions. This is the same thing that happens if you just choose like a double index notation that is doesn't make sense to the computer. Okay. 